Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. How are y'all doing this afternoon, this morning, this evening? Of course, depending on when you are watching today's live sale. You guys, thank you so much for uh, being here with me today. I really appreciate it. As I said, the last couple of sales, I have really enjoyed going live a little bit earlier than the scheduled time, just so that way we can say hello and communicate a little bit more and not feel rushed when it comes to the sales portion of it all. I, I've actually really enjoyed that. So again, thank you for taking time out of your day and spending some of it here with me. Uh, I think that we've got some really great things today. We're going to go from mid-century to antique. We even have one item that is pre-Civil War. So I am most definitely excited to bring that uh, to you guys today. We have glass, we've got pottery, we've got some ephemera and books. So quite excited about the variety uh, in different eras that, that we have for today's sale. So without further ado, let's get into the official hellos. Now, the first comment that I am able to highlight is none other than Miss Penny Sue and Albert, too. I am so glad that I get to be a little bit of a distraction for you today, lady. I hope that even though you're at work, you're still having a good day. Hello, Nancy. How are you today? Definitely putting in that time and effort to try to bring you guys some of the best vintage and antiques out there. Miss Deborah Rowe, a lady. I, we appreciate you even be able to show up at all. And I'm so glad to hear that your husband is okay. You know, things are replaceable, not to say that financially it's the best. Uh, people typically are not. So I'm glad that the situation is as good as it could be in that situation. And, and welcome back. Um, my goodness, you just never know. You never know. And we've got Miss Ruthie B up in the chat. Hello, lady. Thank you again. Ruthie is, you guys, going to be our official bid ender this afternoon. So thank you again, Ruthie. We will most definitely circle back uh, to that here in just a second. We've got Linda. Good afternoon. How are you today? Hello, Liddell. Thank you guys for being here with me, Denise, lady. Hello, how are you? We got Grady, the Vintage Records. How are you doing out there today? Miss Sandra W. Lurkers still need the love. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Hello, Karen. How are you? I hope it's going to be. We're going for great today. Not just good, but we're going to go for great. Hey, Miss No Whammy, No Whammy. But we'll take that PME any day of the week, lady. How are you doing today? And we've got Lucy. Hello. How are you? Nettie, how are you doing out there? And Samantha, good afternoon, ladies. Hello, Shannon, how are you? Thank you for being here. Hey, glowy girl, how you doing out there, lady? We got two glassy sisters. Sisters, we got some glass for you here today. Hello, Adrian. how are you doing today? Thank you for being here. She made it on time, Miss L. Whoa. <laughs> We're going to knock over everything. <laughs> Very excited that you're here, Ellen. How are you doing? Hey, Dusty. Good afternoon, Miss Cindy J. Lady. Is it beautiful there in central Pennsylvania? It is 60 degrees out today. There is a nice breeze. The sun, as you see, is shining. Lots to be thankful for today. Elaine, good afternoon. Hello, Don. How are you doing today? 365, that's right. You can never give up. Not one a day can you ever give up on that vintage hunting. Hello, Karen. How are you doing today? Hey, Kathy. How are you doing? Appreciate you ladies being here. And Christina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I have enjoyed. Uh, it's always a fun time to go into new places and get to share them. I have found some really great places, some great business owners. People have been very friendly and, and kind and gracious. So definitely appreciate that. Hello there, Miss Michelle. How are you doing out there? Hey, Joan, how are you? Joan, I just got your email before I went live. Don't worry, I'll get right back to you. Hey, Pat, how are you? Karen, I think I think we do have some good choices. Yes, I do. Hey, Nancy, how are you? The train incident. I'm going to say we're fine. I don't know about the train incident. Was there another train accident out there? 
Oh my goodness, again, speaking, you just never know, right? Hey, Marsha, how are you today? Jane, good morning, good afternoon, sunshine. How are you? Hey, Sally B, how you doing? Hey, Amy, how are you? It's good to see you, lady. Hey, Meemals, how you doing? Romper room, romper. That's right, we got to do it up. We got to do it up. Hey, Anne. Oh, Jane, hello again. Hey, Anne, how are you doing? And still, you guys... I've made it to the bottom of the chat. I do believe at least so, so far as StreamYard goes. So again, you guys, thank you for being here. Let's get into the nuts and berries of the sale. As usual, I've got some good stuff here for you. We are going to be doing offer ups. Uh, again, Ms. Ruthie B is going to be our official bid ender. You guys, a round of applause, a huge thank you out there to Ms. Ruthie B. Again, lady, greatly appreciate it. You really do make being up here doing uh, the sale that much easier. Hello, Cheryl, how are you? And Judy, Ms. Gutierrez, hello, hello, hello. Sandra, you know we got it, girl. You know we got it. Um, so we are going to be doing some offer ups today. I don't think that I have any claims, uh, quick claims. I may have a bonus item. We'll see how the sale goes. That, if we do get to the bonus item, will be a, a claim. Maybe we'll uh, do a little, we'll do a little test on something uh, if we do get to that bonus item. Um, so yes, everything is going to be offer up. I am going to be honoring just in cases again with just in case you're not obligated to use it. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but just know, of course, that I am going to be honoring them. Um, as always with the just in case, I do ask that you've been an active bidder up until that point. Please keep in mind that there's been a lot of new people lately in the community. So they may be just trying to figure it out bless so a little bit of grace with that somebody might have walked away uh, from the sale they're just coming into the sale um, so do keep that in mind and of course make sure that you're holding on to that just in case until you hear the countdown as always it's going to be a roll of the dice as to whether or not that just in case gets in there uh, before the official bid end as always ruthie is on the west coast so they do have a tendency to have much faster internet speeds out there so just know that Ruthie is always killing it. So get those just in cases out there or throw down those high bids, whichever you would like. Now, if you are a new buyer or a buyer that hasn't been with me in a while, please remember, I'm going to need your contact information. That way I can send you an invoice. Is all you have to do is send an email to the cults of vintage at yahoo.com. You're seeing it here in the banner. It's also that is it the pin comment? No, it's not the pinned comment. Let me go ahead and throw that up for you right now, okay? It is going to be the pinned comment that you are going to see here. It's going to be the, um, the blue rectangle that you'll see at the top of the chat. Let me make sure I type it in right. Okay. Boom. It's coming up here for you in just a second. So again, pinned comment at the top of the chat, blue rectangle. And if anything else, it is going to be, of course, uh, the first thing that you see in the description of the video. There we go. Enchanté, Miss Laurent. How are you today? Um, so yeah, you're going to want to send the following information. Your real name, if it's different than your YouTube username. Your full shipping address, and most importantly, is going to be that zip code. That way I can get you the discounted calculated shipping. You will pay what I pay is as far as shipping. And of course, the email address that you use for PayPal. If you don't have a PayPal account, that does not mean that you can't buy. You can. You still want to make sure that you send the same email with the same information. Just indicate that you would like a link. I will send you a link that's going to let you check out as a PayPal guest. So you don't have to sign up for anything. You can use any credit or debit card that you would like. And the added benefit to that is that you're still going to get the buyer protection. Please keep in mind, I only accept payment through PayPal. I don't accept any other form of payment. It just keeps everything consolidated and streamlined for me. Okay. Um, I think that is about it. Is that it? No, is that it? You forgot of the cult vintage. <laughs> Let's go ahead and unpin that one then. Appreciate you, Pat. Appreciate you. <laughs> I'm new here. What do you expect? You know? Let's try that again. Bam. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. 
Is it y'all? But is it? There we go. It's the cult of vintage, not the cult vintage. Yeah. The cult of vintage at yahoo.com. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into it. Let's start off with our first item, Schultz Tweet. You guys can hear me okay. I'm assuming I didn't see any, any comment to the other. Oops, oops, I did it again. <laughs> choke on my coffee too cute all right let's start off with some ephemera we're gonna start it at ten dollars oh he's got all of the symbols up in that one but we're still gonna start it at ten dollars <laughs> we've got an antique magazine here for you guys it is the mother's magazine it is from february of 1917 back when you could get a magazine for just 15 cents now there is some separation here on the spine okay overall i think it's in pretty gosh darn good antique condition obviously with the mother's magazine especially given the era in which it, it was written it's going to be it's going to be very domestic in its uh subject matter so it's all about the earthly the you know being a good mother the social graces and the manners of being a good uh mother of course of being a good wife and housekeeper all of those things you know that ladies were charged with back in the day it is black and white there are advertisements throughout the magazine including of course the girdles there you can see again that cover is separating okay so just great reading really interesting things that include peril to childhood in the movies teamwork in the home adventures in hospitality to plant or not to plant new household drapery patterns little sermons on personal beauty tested recipes company desserts uh, Midwinter fashions and fabrics, club work and civics, 10 pairs of long pants, please. So there are short stories that you are going to see in here. But again, we've got great black and white advertisements throughout. We've got Victor Records. We've got this dude here looking like himself. A lot of it is going to be illustrated. So this would be great if you wanted to kind of pull things out, frame them. Maybe you're into the junk journaling. Maybe you're into scrapbooking. These are great because let me tell you what. Thank you, Miss Michelle. Thank you, Miss Laurent. Um, you could make your own. I don't know if you guys saw the video, but you kind of cut these out with some really good scissors, of course. And you can make your own oh, soup collage and frame the collage. So really cute, kind of cut out the words and the verbiage. I'm not showing you anything. So there is a lot of different stuff that you can do. Here's, we've got some needlework. Looks like they've got a little drawstring bag or purse there, a satchel, if you will. Some drapery. Oh, there's a little Campbell Kids. He's a little Cupid. Well, yeah, it's February, huh? So great magazine. I love the fashions. I love the pictures. The articles are fun. There are some weird advertisements in here. Kind of, there we go. And of course, most of the advertisements are going to be here in the back. We do have some recipes. There's a J E L L O. All kinds. I love these. It's just, they're just little time capsules. You know, they really truly are. Hygiena, baby bottles. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for the bids. Miss Attic Fair is at 14. Let's go ahead and start your countdown. Again, it is February of 1917. It is the Mother's Magazine. Let's do the countdown. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Them folks back in the day had a thing for washing their eyes out, though, didn't they? Oh, look at no money in advance. You can rent your furniture. Man, they had that racket back in the day, too. There is our bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Do a what do we got? We got bonnet bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Uh, Michelle, your 16 came in right after the bid end. However, lady... You're good. You got it at the 14, sister friend. Appreciate it. And let me get you written down. 
right? Yep, you got it at 14. All right, let me do a little flippity flop here. I want to, I know what I want to do next, but I don't know that I want the list. Um, oh, here we go. Now I've got, this is a set. You're going to get two. Okay. So there's no choice. They're identical. You're going to get two of them. I think they're quite darling and it's almost that time. Um, so one thing those, those Victorians loved back in their day was their Easter. And I've got two small Victorian era milk glass Easter eggs. So these are hand blown, you guys. There's no condition issues. And it's really cute because, well, this one does not have the pinhole. This one does have the pinhole. You can barely see it there. I mean, it is granular, quite literally a pinhole. But these are so precious. I mean, this is like an elevated kind of Easter. But I am saying this, if you do love Guten Tag, Guten Tag. Uh, if you do love kind of like the Victorian era, I mean, they were so huge. Kind of, it very much symbolizes, you know, fertility and rebirth. Um, so these are great, just little accent pieces. Maybe you have some egg cups, right? So you've got like the vintage kitchen vibe going on. You've got some egg cups. Maybe consider you can get these in a variety of different sizes, some uh, milk glass eggs. Of course, you could get, you know, temporary one. But why would you? They measure approximately three inches, three inches too. Okay, they're just sweet little little accoutrement that you can add in there. Yes, the egg cup, a hundred percent. No, we don't want to restart the computer. That would be a no no. All right, so we've got Miss Elaine Linney is in it at fifteen. Donna gotcha in it at sixteen. Ladies, do appreciate it. There are no condition issues to these. I did clean them up. Uh, before I put them up here to sale. So great condition. Again, three inches tall-ish. Um, no condition issues, Victorian era milk glass eggs. And let's go ahead and do the countdown. And this is for both. This is for both, okay? So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Donna, I got that just in case, lady. Hello to everybody. The puppy, how you doing out there? Hey, Lizzie. Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, there is our egg. Bid end. Or that's interesting. On the phone, it's showing us white eggs. On the computer, it's showing us brown eggs. So have your pick. But it is our egg bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruth B. Now, Miss Donna, you had that just in case of 22, but a pew pew to Miss Elaine Liddy Linny with that just in case lady of 25. You're getting both of your eggs at 23. I love these. I think that they're really cute. Let me get you written down here. Thank you, ladies. Miss Elaine, Lenny, you got it. All right, let me something safely to here. All right. Um, let's do a book because I do have several books to get through today. I love a good book. Let's do our first one. We've got some cooking. Here for you. We're started at just, whoa, not 100. We're going to start it at just $10 if, of course, anybody is interested. Now, this is copyrighted 1927. Um, and I really love picking up these cookbooks, especially antique or vintage ones, because for a lot of, hello, John, how are you today? Um, because I know that for a lot of folks, you know, maybe at some point you had a grandmother's, a great grandmother's, a mother's recipe, and it kind of got lost in the shuffle, or maybe you just never got it. And referring back to these old, these antique or vintage cookbooks, these are like the classic recipes I know that a lot of people grew up with. So again, it is copyrighted 1927. It is the modern method of preparing delightful foods. Goodness. And it is from Miss Ida Bailey Allen. Miss Ida Bailey Allen. In, if anything else, that's a great cover. Like, look at all of that scroll work on there. 
Okay, 1927. Yeah, a lot of the milk glass eggs were painted on. And they do not look like they ever had paint on them. Now, this again is copyrighted 1927. Good morning, oh, to be me too, Miss Kyle. How are you doing? So, this was never filled out. It looks like there was a little, like, a uh, film book in there, if you will. I think there is but one loose page. Nope, that's a lie. So, this page here, that looks like it's loose. It's not. It was just really roughly cut. So it's just a little bit longer. <laughs> you get extra. You get extra page, pages, paper in this one here. Um. So again, Miss Ida Bailey Allen. I'm a, Oh, that is Miss Ida right there. She's out there doing her thing. Okay. Hostess with the mostest. Watch out. So let's go ahead. Do I have a table of contents? No. You're just going to go right into it. So we've got... Such recipes as coddled apples, stewed figs, prunes, or apricots, grilled apples, brown cornmeal mush. Now, the pages on these have like a semi-gloss to them, which is nice. I think that a lot of times that semi-gloss really does help uh, the paper last a little bit longer. We have rice cakes and waffles and French toast, Sally Loon, quick muffins, health muffins, tea biscuits, drop biscuits. There are a lot of recipes. We got scrambled eggs, breakfast cake, cheese omelet, Spanish omelet, hash browns. Do we have any entrees or are we just we're full on cream potatoes, fruit cocktail, cream of potato soup, chicken, lamb, ham or veal croquette, uh, pepper steak, Chinese onion omelet. That one kind of sounds good. Uh, we've got fresh, fresh fish croquettes. French dressing, quick, what is it? Brand bread, steamed brown bread, butterscotch squares, plain French dressing, egg creole sandwiches, tuna fish or tuna fish or, sa or salmon sandwiches, fruit salad combinations, shortcake, uh, Spanish casserole. I don't know what that word is. Buranese sauce maybe some of you know i don't know but full-on great condition 1927 it is jam-packed she's small but she's mighty miss ida really put her foot into that one miss marie is in it at 13 ladies thank you so much do appreciate it really good condition nearly 100 years old and let's go ahead and start your countdown and it is a smaller one too okay so here we go 15 14 13 12 11 10 Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. Okay, so Masters Bernays. Oh, Bernays saw it. Thank you very much. Appreciate that one. Miss Nancy, I got you at 15. Miss Marie has got her just in case of 30. Oh, Glowy came in with her just burns. Ladies, you out there pew pew and waiting for them last seconds. Thank you. We got the breakfast bit end. Thank you, Ruthie B. All right. So Miss Nancy had 15. Marie, your 45 came in after the bit end. I do appreciate it. Marie, we saw that 30. Are you going to highlight for me? But Miss Glowy came in at, with a just in case of 42. So at 31, Miss Glowy, lady, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. You're getting you the 1927 Miss Odd's cookbook. You sure are. Ida appreciates it, too. She feels valued right, wherever she is out there in the world. Hey, just a viewer, how are you doing today? All right, coffee. Mm. What do I want to do? Gonna... Let's do some uh, mid-century glass. How about that? Let's switch it up, okay? Now, this is in Murano style. We're not going to call it Murano. We're just going to call it Murano style because there is no identifying mark on it. Um, and I don't want to label it if I have zero clue who made it. Uh, it would be nice if I could find it on... Did I even put it on the list? Benton, blah, 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 flower, blah, blah, blah. Ball pop. That's right here at the end, Michael. Okay. We're going to start her off at 18. 
if of course anybody is interested. Um, there is a weird thing going on with her, so I just want to point that out to you before we really get into it. But you have got this smaller, and it's gorgeous. It is a clear glass base with a white case ruffle on it. I mean, I love this. Talk about something that's classic that's going to go in with a lot of decor. There are no chips. There are no cracks. It does have, of course, a smooth, polished bottom on it. There's these, like brown marks in here. I don't know if something got into the glass or what, do you see it ish? Let me see if I can, right there. I'm unsure. So I feel like they have like, I'm gonna call it an inclusion. So there is an inclusion in the glass. It's like these brown marbling marks to it. It's not like you don't feel it, it's still smooth. So it is there. I just wanna draw your attention to it. Okay, gorgeous piece of glass, great with milk glass. Um, but again, I just think that this makes a beautiful small little catch-all, maybe for some change or for some rings. If you do set this on uh, maybe a kitchen countertop or a bathroom uh, vanity countertop, you can place your rings in there as you bathe or wash your hands or do the cleaning in there. But again, great for change. Shannon, I got you at 18, lady. Thank you so much. Again, I think that you can see why I'm calling it Murano style. It's very indicative of a lot of free form uh, Murano glass. The measurement on it, we are at three and a half inches tall, three and a half inches tall. And at its widest in diameter, you are at six inches tall. So small but mighty. I think it's elegant. I think it's great if you are a mid-century glass collector. But I think with that clear and the white, it does lend itself very well to a nice traditional. Yes, thank you, John. It's it's a clean, it's a very clean looking uh, piece. Misty's out there, she's lurking, she's working. She's getting all your invoices and your packaging done. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for your bids. My internet is acting really weird. So Joan, I got you at 20, Shannon is at 22. Again, there are no chips, there are no cracks, but we do have that inclusion right down here so that you do see it, okay? Right there for you. Three and a half tall, six inches at its widest in diameter. Guys, really appreciate the bit. Okay. She said peanut M&Ms. I got you, Karen. Do it up. Little Hershey Kisses, Candy Hearts. She's watching. See? That's right. All right. Miss Joan is at 24. Let's go ahead, you guys, and do the countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bid end. Ooh, Connie's got some tea. All right, Connie. Let's let's see what you got there, lady. Look at that. It's icy. This is great for your winter decor, but perfect though I think for spring and summer and Easter. How darling would that be? There is our cupcake bid end. You could put a cupcake in there. Sure could. You can put a cupcake in there. Thank you, Ruthie, uh, for the bid. And Susie was at 25, but Miss Joan came in with her 27. Uh, congratulations, and thank you, Miss Joan. You're getting gorgeous. She's elegant. She's clean. She's fresh. She's crisp. She said, I'm timeless. I'm going to go live with Joan at 27. Thank you, lady. Let me get you written down here. <laughs> Got it. Shannon Girl got to 31. It came in after the bid end. Jay oh, Jamie's getting the wines and the martinis. Hi, Jamie. How are you today? All right. Jamie loves eye contact. Yes, she does. Okay. Let's do our next item. What do you want to do? Um, okay. I'm gonna do, okay, I, the fact that I'm selling this one, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it. I love this. I almost actually did not get it, but there was just something on me. I was like, save the antique, Michael, save the antique. I think somebody out there is really gonna appreciate it. I hope somebody does. We're gonna save the antiques and the vintage. We're starting this lovely lady off at $35. It's gorgeous. It is unusual. 
too. I will say that it's unusual in the finish in which they chose. Hey, Jason and Tina, how y'all doing? Um, oop, I got a little bit of sticker on there. Gosh, darn it. So we do have one of my most personal favorite companies. We've got Royal Saxony. Okay. We do have our insignia here, Royal Sax Saxony, made in Germany. We do have a porcelain base. There are no chips or cracks to our porcelain base, and it does measure eight inches tall. Eight inches tall. The glaze. Y'all stop. The glaze on this is gorgeous. Again, this is porcelain. Keep in mind when you see the front. Look. Do you see that purple lavender luster finish to it? Stop. Do you see down here you have a beautiful gold flex? But then when you get into kind of like the darker purple, it almost has a, a blue flex to it. It is beautiful. You're not seeing things. It has got a luster finish to it. We do have a beautiful pink with a yellow center. This is, of course, hand painted. The beauty of this is, is that the luster finish. Thank you, Glowy. Do appreciate you, bid lady. Um, while the porcelain itself, right? Let me flip it around here. So this has a matte feel to it, okay? However, when we see the hand painting, it almost has an enamel feel. So it is very glossy to the touch and the finish. So there is a lot going on with this piece. Look at that. This is 1800s too, might I add. 1800s. Uh, Mid-late 1800s is when this vase would have been produced. So you do have the option to display this single flower here kind of coming up. She's ready to bloom here in just a second. Or you can do the more heavily hand painted on the front. So again, I, the color, the luster, it's just an unusual colorway that really spoke to me. I mean, this is, this is pure spring and summer decor, but if you were an antique lover, or if you just like something a little unusual, this is really it. Um, like I said, the glaze, the luster glaze is harder to get from Royal Saxony. They do a lot of earth tones, very muted. Everything's very matte. You get creams and greens and browns. You typically don't get these bright springy colors because it just wasn't in fashion at the time. So a little bit harder of a piece to get because of the colors they chose. Eight inches, Royal Saxony, made in Germany, no chips, no cracks. You guys, thank you so much for the bids. Do appreciate it. And let's do your countdown. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Hello, Lisa. Hello to everyone that has joined us. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. Ooh, ooh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, there's our purple heart bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Y'all are keeping me on my toes today. Hey, Tiffany, how are you doing? Thank you. Tiffany agrees. Okay, Miss Vegas agrees. All righty. Uh, math. Okay. Y'all really just trying to get me on camera live doing this math. I see ya. I see ya. All right. 53. But Miss Deanna said 60. Miss Glowy said no, 72. But Miss Robin Watson said no, I got it just in case 75. Pew pew, sister friend. All right. Math. 73. <laughs> All righty, you guys, thank you so much for the bids. Robin, lady, congratulations and thank you. You're getting a very beautiful piece um, at $73. Thank you so much. I'm glad I went back. Like, I saw it and I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, again, I struggle sometimes with, I love that, I, you know, but sometimes my tastes are a little bit different. And so I'm like, should I get it? Glad I got it. We saved an antique. Let's let's just urge. Let's just let's just do it. Let's go to something that's interesting and unique. I've really been trying to bring you guys some very different um, stuff, kind of like one-off things. Hey JGB, how you doing today? Um, 
this is one of those pieces. Now, I, listen, I don't know who made it, but I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. We're going to start it at $18. 18 is a popular number today. If, of course, anybody is interested. Um, at its tallest, it measures doo -doo -doo, five and one fourth inches. Five and one fourth inches for this clear glass, hand blown base. It, okay, you're not seeing things. This is crazy. You want to get crazier with it? Did I even put the start better? Sally's in it at 18. Thank you, lady. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> five and one fourth inches. So we do have a bow here. So you can, in fact, put water in here. Here's the really strange and weird thing. So like right here, look, your finger. Well, let me do it with the pen. Look, there's like cutouts in the glass. Do you see how far the pen is in the glass? Look at that. There's like little ones over in here. It's just, it's so weird, y'all. I mean, you can literally, like your fingers inside the glass and several, that one is just like super deep. Look at that. It's so odd. I love it. It is totally hand blown, by the way. I mean, it really truly is. That is so unique. I thought for like, you know, thank you, God. No, wait. Um, 20. Okay, so technically, Sally Lady, you are at the first 18. So, Sally Lady, you are holding. Okay, well, this lag is serious. I got to wait for y'all. Deborah, Sally, I got you at 25. I don't know if it's end of day. It's definitely a glass blower that was having some fun that was feeling experimental and just went with it. I mean, it's just a really odd piece. Um, as I was saying, I thought it would go great for kind of some mid-century uh, fans, but if you really love kind of like your um, modernistic, your impressionistic kind of art styles, this would lend itself really well to it. We are gonna call it a free form. Look at this little divot down in here. I mean, you can't get your finger in that one. Oh my gosh, that would be so cute, Kristen, to have like little, you could put the dirt in there and have them coming out. You could put the dirt in the middle and have like the clear. I just thought it was so nifty. Five and one fourth inches to the top. There's no chips or cracks. Lord knows if there was one, it'd be really hard to see it. <laughs> but I just thought it was really cool. There's no, in, no signature on it. There's no hallmark on it. Um, I bought it based solely on the aesthetics of it. I really, truly did. All right, Miss Sally B is in it at 25. Thank you so much, lady. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do the countdown. Oh, Deborah and Sally are duking it out. Let's do it. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And bid end. But it's just so like weird. And I love it. I love it. Oh, Miss Kyle's getting in on it too. Oh, wait, shoot. Sally has is holding it at 30. There is our heart bid and orchids. Okay. So Sally had high bid at 30. Kyle, I see at 27. Sally got your just in case of 46. Miss Sally lady. You didn't need it. Congratulations and thank you. You're getting what I think is a very one-of-a-kind piece at $30, lady. Thank you, everyone, for the bids. Sally B. Boom. Gotcha. All right. Let's set that over here. Uh, what song can we do? Okay, let's do this. Let's do, I think this is probably one of the prettiest pieces that I've ever had for sale. I said it and I'm sticking with it, okay? I'm really, really excited to be able to bring you guys this next piece, okay? <clears throat> so for all of like you, like very like English tea garden, tea party, you know, lovers, if you love, 
your pastels, you love the florals, you love something that's very springy or summery, this next piece is for you. If you appreciate just very high-end artistry, this piece is for you. Now, this is a porcelain vase, okay? It is not marked. Porcelain vase is not marked. I am going to start this one off at 60, and I think that you'll see why here in just a second, okay? I do want to let you know that it is not without flaws. So before you bid, I do want to show you the flaws, but try not to be too overwhelmed with the beauty of this piece, okay? Are we ready? Porcelain, it is Nippon, and this is Moriyagi, but this ain't just, this is a, you know, come on. Look at that. Do you see all the Moragi, all the slip work that is done on that? These, all of the flowers, right? These flowers, the vines, the leaves, this is all slip work. Do you see all of the, all of this up here is all slip work. Now the porcelain itself, the base itself, there are no chips. There are no cracks when, okay, right here. You see, there is some damage to the Moriyagi itself. Interestingly enough, so this would be um, more than likely early 1900s within the first 20 years of 1900. So turn of the century, 1900 to about 1920, okay? Um, what I did not actually realize about these pieces is you see that the flowers, these are hand-painted. So the purple flowers underneath are actually hand-painted. It is then fired, and what I didn't realize is that the slip work, the Moriyagi, is then applied over the already painted vessel. I did not know that that's how that was done. I quite frankly figured that they applied the Moriyagi and then went in and hand painted it. It's the completely reverse process, right? So there is this area here. I do have, oh. Uh... Y'all, yeah. it's just, it's so, it's a lot to take in. So seeing the damage, it, okay. So right here, there is a break to the stem. Now, the nice thing about that is because it was hand painted before the Moriyagi was applied, it's really hard to identify the damage. Um, it is there. It is not 100%. I would say it's like 98%. But because of the beauty of the piece, the intricacy of the piece, it is so difficult to see any damage. The damage that is there, I don't, quite frankly, really consider, consider it to be of significance. It is, that's my personal opinion. Some people may say that's far too much respect to me, given the delicacy and the age of the piece. I think, quite frankly, it can be forgiven. Right. Um, so I just I love the colors on it, the artistry that went into it. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? How absolutely beautiful is that? I just I was delighted. I was so delighted to be able to get this and be able to bring it to you guys. All right, guys, Joan, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for your bids. Really do appreciate it. I mean, you could stick a flower in there. I would say a synthetic or a dry. Um, I would be hesitant to actually put any water in there. While it is fully glazed from what I can see um, looking in, I would just be nervous about water settling into it, creating crazing, and that Moriyagi just kind of having a, um, a what do you call it, crazed surface. It may begin to flake off a little bit easier, right? All right, so let's go ahead and start the countdown. So again, early 1900s, it is Nippon, it is a Moriagi with a heavier, I think it's, I think we can all agree, it's a little bit more of an elevated uh, slip work done to it. There are some condition issues to some of the flowers. 90, I'm saying 98, it's probably closer to 99% intact. But again, I, in my personal opinion, feel that it can be forgiven. All right. Oh, Miss Tiffany, thank you. Let's go ahead, you guys, and start the countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, and bid end. Again. See, it's there, but it's like, honestly, when you look at it in real life, you don't see it, but it is there, okay? Look at that. Ooh, oh, gotcha. Oh, there is our flower power bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Math time. All right, so Miss Tiffany had high bid at 70. Joan, I got your just in case of 70. Miss Tiffany got the just in case of 80. However, however, Miss Glowy Girl, lady, get it at 81. Thank you, everyone, for your bids. Congratulations, Glowy. Oh, look at that. 81. You are getting it. Jealous. I'm going to keep my eye out for more of these pieces. I really, truly am because I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Congratulations, Chloe. Thank you so much. Let me put this over here. I love it too. That and the Royal Saxony piece, like, I was like, oh, I don't get down with like these purples and pinks, but gosh darn it. Those I was getting down with. All right. Let's do some books again. Let's go ahead and do two books in a row. All right. Let's do. I don't know which one we're going to do first. Let's see. We're going to. And you know what? I'm going to leave that in there because it's part of its history. Which one are we doing here? I have to look at the copyright because I have two of the same. Okay, well, we're going to do this one. Remember at the beginning of the sale, and if you weren't with me at the beginning of the sale, I did say that we did have an item in today's sale that is a pre-Civil War. Okay, this is the next item. Uh, I am going to start this one off at $35. It is a book. It is a it is the natural history book. Okay, let's check it. That's the back. Okay, front. Here's the spine. Natural history. Now, if y'all know, then you know. Okay, you know what you're about to be in store. With. Oh, Dusty said I know. This book, you guys, the copyright is 1854. 1854. It's over 100, right? It's over 170 years old. Six is 60, 40. Oh, it's 100 and I don't know. It's really old. It's from 1854. <laughs> now, I do want to show you that at some point in its history, this is what you said, heard me say. I'm not going to take it out. Miss Margaret owned it out of Albany, Ohio. She did put some scotch tape on there. I'm not going to pull it off. It's part of its history. Let's go ahead and check out the copyright on it. So again, this is from 1854. Okay, 1854. Guess what? It's fully illustrated. Yeah, it is. Fully illustrated with 450 original designs, 450 169 years old, 168 and a half years old. So it's nearly 170. Um, did you hear me? 450 original designs by Mr. William Harvey. Go ahead and look that name up. By Mr. William Harvey, 450 illustrations are in this book. Small, but gosh darn if it ain't mighty, okay? Now, I know that you may be seeing some weirdness right here. That is because these pages have started to come loose. So page from pages 101 to 110, they have started to come loose. Now, these are still strong, but at the top, they've started to become unstrong. I think at being nearly 170 years old, we can all agree that that's pretty okay. As I said, 400, look at the illustrations. You see reproductions of a lot of Mr. Harvey's illustrations. People clamor for these. Well, here they are in their original publication. 450, these are animals, both mammal, fish, invertebrates, insects. This is just, oh, we got the hunt of a lion here. Okay, 450 illustrations. 
Okay. There is some foxing. However, the pages are not torn. They are not ripped. We do again from page 101 to 110. There is the beginning of separation. However, they are still fully intact. Again, this book is copyrighted 1854, predating the Civil War. I think in excellent overall antique condition. This is all about the animals, okay? Got some skulls in there, I'll spare you that. We got a rhino right here. It wouldn't surprise me if there wouldn't be an animal or two or three or a dozen or more that have gone extinct since the publication of this book, which I think quite frankly makes it very fascinating indeed. Foxing, foxing is this. So you see like the browning right here. Typically it occurs when uh, the book, the pages have been exposed to moisture at some point and it begins to discolor uh, the page. So it quite literally, they call it foxing because it's like the color, it's like that coppery red of a fox pelt. Look at, it's just, this is, this is a really collectible, desirable book. Again, you're seeing foxing, okay? Not uncommon. It's just simply not uncommon. Some collectors will say it doesn't matter to me. Some collectors say it does. Again, it's a personal preference kind of thing. I've got a crane or a stork here. It's just, I mean, the illustrations go on and on and on and on, you guys. Um, again, William Harvey, illustrator. We've got, oh, here we're getting into the lizards, the reptiles. All right, we got Miss Laurent is in it at 45. Ladies, thank you so much for your bids. Oh, watch out, snakes. Let's go ahead and start the countdown. Again, 1854, copyright, 450 illustrations by Mr. William Harvey. Pages 101 to 110 have begun to separate, but look at the spine. Classic. That is a classic spine. Let's do the countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, where am I at? 8, ooh, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Nearly every single page, you guys. Look at that. Nearly every single page has got illustrations by Mr. William Harvey, 1854. Ooh, ooh, y'all, oh, there's our Fox bid. And thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Appreciate you, lady. Dusty, she had that bid thrown. Okay, wait. So Miss Yvonne actually was at 47. Dusty came in at 52. Vicky threw in that, whoops, Vicky threw in that just in case it fit. So Dusty Boy was like, ah! Dusty, congratulations and thank you, lady. The hunt is officially over. It's coming to you at $56. Get it. Hey, that, you know what? Good deal, too. All right. Let me set that one here to the side. Let me lay you down. All right. I said two books in a row. Let's not confuse the situation. Or maybe let's confuse the situation. I've got another book here for you. Let's start. Oh, man. Okay. We're going to start this book off at $15. This book is dated 1924. So 99 years old. That math I can do. 99 years old. It is Lippincott's Home Manuals. Clothing for Women, okay, by Laura Bolt. I don't know what A dot M means. Laura I Baldman Bolt, A-M. So look at that. Here is your spine. Little faded there. Not too bad, okay. Chloe's already in at 15. Thank you, lady. Do appreciate you. So, again, copyrighted 1924. Let's talk about it. We do have an inscription on the interior. I like that. I think that it adds to it. Um, Darissa Jane. 
Miami University of 1926. Yeah, here it is in Ohio. Um, clothing for women. I'm trying to, I don't know where I got the copyright from. <sighs> well, we have seven colored plates with 262 illustrations. Okay, seven colored plates with 260, there's the copyright, and two, 262. So original copyright, 1916. However, this one is from 1924, okay? There are sewing patterns in here. There are stitching techniques. Um, you're gonna have to forgive me because I don't know a whole lot about sewing. So what I'll do is read you some of the contents. We'll flip through it, and then we'll start the countdown for you. So we've got clothing, budget, and buying, fabrics, facts for consumers, Principles of clothing design, color, pattern making, pattern making mannish shirt and midi blouse, pattern making skirts and undergarments, simple problems in color and clothing design, commercial patterns, purchase and use, tools and equipment, processes involved in the construction of garments, constructive processes, stitches, constructive processes, cutting, fasting, seams, finishes, Construction of undergarments, which includes corset covers and petticoats. Construction of undergarments, drawers, nightdresses. Construction of outerwear, midi blouse, mannish shirt. Uh, construction of outer garment, tailored waistcoat, tailored skirts, uh, lingerie blouses and dresses. Uh, outer garments of woolen material, silk dresses, blouse, gumpy, foundation skirt, waist lining, self trimming, embroidery and home and women. Oh my gosh. And then here's a whole listing of the illustrations. You guys, thank you so much for the bids. We got Miss Diane and Yvonne are in it. So here we go. Let's flip through it again. We've got both, um, what do you call it? Illustrations and photos. We do have seven color plates. I will tell you from what I could see, the color plates are in, there are some designs, some fashion designs, as well as some color samples of fabrics that you're gonna find in the color plates, okay? So again, just a variety of different techniques. We are copyrighted originally, what was it, 1916? This one was 1924. Darlene, I got you in it at 30, thank you, lady. Let's get closer to the front here because that's where the color plates are. I'm gonna try to flip a little faster and get uh, you to the color plates here. We're coming up. Probably going to flip. There we go. So, again, a lot of them. It's just so classic of the era. So, the color plates are one sided because, you know, the color bleed. Look at that. Oh, and people used to dress like that. You know what I mean? All right. 31. Let's do some more color plates. Look at her. Can't you just hear the music? Ooh, look at this one. Look at her. That looks a little uncomfortable, but yeah. Um, and again, this is, I don't know, simultaneous contrast. Don't know what that means. Maybe some of you that are a little bit more educated, you'll know what that means. Michael doesn't know. Um, again, color blocking, fabric swatches, some patterns that we have here. Again, those are the fabric samples as I was talking about. Well, Jamie, better late than never. We got a lot of stuff to get through. I think that was it for our color plates. And we do have some illustrations up here of different areas of fashion. So let's do it. 1924, overall really good condition. We got some statues in there even. Let's do it. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, and bid end. I know those plates, it's just, the book is in overall really good condition. So to like pull those out to fray of them, it would be a little painful. I know some people would have zero problem doing that. I'd be like, Ooh. all right, Miss Diane's got her just in case and Glowy has got her just in case in. There is our spool bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B, appreciate it. Miss Diane, your 59 came in right after the bid end. Thank you so much. Do appreciate you. Darlene also 
in after the bid and Diane had that just in case of 46, but Glowy came in with her just in case of 57. So at 47, Miss Glowy, uh, congratulations and thank you once again. You're getting your 1924 clothing for women book at what did I say? 47. Congratulations and thank you. All right. I said two books in a row. We got two books in a row. Let's do. Let's do two glass pieces in a row. Let's mix it up, shall we? Let's do some blue because Michael's got a few pieces of blue. Let's decide what blue piece do I want. Let's do our little satin. Let's do some seven and a half blue coin dot cased satin glass. We've got a lot of technique going on in here. Uh, can anyone tell me what to name blue glass that has the weird feel to it? Not satin. Was that just fortuitous that I happened to say that all at the same time? Is it a satin? It's got like a textured feel to it. It can be either um, satin or I can't remember the other one. Satin or. It's the lesser of the two. There's satin, because satin is like all the way, like the next piece. What is the other one? Frosted? Is that what they called it? Like, do you all know what I'm talking about? There's satin and there's frosted, because frosted has like the smooth interior or underside. <laughs> okay, we're going to start our next piece off at $25. Okay, are we ready for it? I love these pieces. It's got quite a bit going on. Let's get that in the chat so we can highlight it. Here we go. Bam. So we've got our blue satin cased glass ruffle vase. Again, this is going to be late 1800s, early 1900s. There is no manufacturer assigned to it. There is an inclusion in the glass. You see here, that is in the glass, though I will say that you can feel it. It's very smooth. There is zero coarseness to it, but there is an inclusion. It is not chipped. It is not cracked. It is, it's like spelter or um, ash got caught in the glass and then they just let it go. But look at that. Oh, I love it. See that satin? Satin glass is treated. So it's got that mat or that rough coarse, not coarse, but it's got that satiny feel. Both to, to all surfaces. Whereas the frosted glass, like this would be in uh, smooth or the bottom would be smooth. So again, hand blown. I just love this. We are, it's a beauty mark. Yes, thank you. We are at seven and a half inches tall. Seven and a half inches frosted. Frosted. Thank you, Ivan. Frosted. That is what they, yes, satin and frosted glass. Yes. So beautiful feel to this. This is a satin glass. It's got a little bit of a texture to it, but it's not coarse. It's not like sandpapery feeling. Y'all know, right? It's that sea glass feel. Look at that ruffle. Look at the bullicante in there. I believe it's a bullicante effect to it. It is swirled up through the ruffle. Again, there is our beauty mark, our inclusion in there. We are at seven and a half inches tall look at that color again late 1800s early 1900s oh that's right i think she's beautiful again this is great for those winter decors but i think it is perfect though too for spring and easter right with the yellows the pinks we do have some gorgeous yellow satin that glows uh coming up here in just a moment <clears throat> oh gosh with a lavender, the lot Jane, yes, I think that would be gorgeous. Whether you choose a lavender or a white lilac in here, that would be so beautiful, yes. I do sound a little robotic. There, maybe that'll be better, I'm hoping. Um, I just think it's a gorgeous piece of glass. She is an older piece. Again, we've no chips, there's no cracks to it. You see those controlled bubbles going throughout it, giving it a beautiful luster 
effect to it. She is a curvy girl. Watch out. Um, we've got Miss Deborah is in it at 37 and a half. Wait, yeah, seven and a half inches tall. Okay. It's just a gorgeous shade of blue. Let's go ahead, you guys, and start the countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Yes, you do get a gold star, Yvonne. Love the silver crest going around it. It's very subtle, though, too. There is our icy bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Miss Deborah, lady, $30. It is coming to you. Congratulations and thank you so much. Well, let me get you written down. I love it. Think spring. Think spring. See, I'm thinking spring so hard that we've got a beautiful spring day today here in Essentville. And I just happen to keep be, keep buying blue glass, blue glass, blue glass, blue glass. You want to do the biggest piece of the sale? Biggest piece of the sale? Sure. Um, as I've said, I really try to put in the effort to find you guys some Things, things that I've not been able to bring for sale, things I haven't seen available for purchase on many platforms. Um, this is one of those pieces I about fell over um, when I saw it. Now, I have brought in you guys a number of different swung bases from Viking to Fenton, Ellie Smith, um, and that's great, you know. Um, I want to still continue to do that, especially in colors or very like dynamic swings to them. Um, however, today, now I won't say this is the first swung base from this company. However, this is the most um, impressive. Okay. It is the largest item that we have for sale today. It measures 24 and 7 8 inches tall. 24 and 7 8 inches tall. We're going to start it at 140. I believe in this item and it's wrong. All right. So y'all know the name Kanawa. Michael has finally learned how to pronounce the name with confidence. I have got for you a 24 and 7 8 inch Kanawa swung base. Oh, but wait. It is in the Amberina. Not only, look at that. So, yes, this will fluoresce. You are seeing, of course, that cadmium up here, especially the tip, right? Not only is it a gorgeous swung amberina vase, it's also a crackle glass swung vase. I'm bringing you, for the first time, a crackle glass swung vase. Again, this is from Kanawa. Okay. Oh, it's sounding better now? I think maybe it's because I'm blocking. I might just have to put it. Hold on. We'll just do this. I don't even have my mic plugged in. Does that sound better? I didn't even have my mic plugged in, y'all. I did not even have my mic plugged in. <laughs> Does it sound better now? <laughs> My apologies. I was not, I was like, it's plugged in. It was not, my mic was not plugged in this entire time. Um, so yeah, this is a Kanawa crackle glass swung vase, 24 and 7 8 inches tall. At never. Now, listen, I knew that they made smaller ones, like, and they do. It's like half the size. This is a large and in charge. You want to have a swung glass vase that don't nobody else have? Go ahead, pick you up this Amberina Kanawa crackle glass swung vase. Now listen, I can't imagine how many of these got busted just to make the one. If you're not familiar, like most of your swung bases are actually molded, okay? So they pour the liquid glass into the mold 
as it is starting to solidify before it's solidified, they do their little swing to create a dramatic effect, okay? To create crackle glass, they also at a certain temperature then take the glass, dunk it into water, which creates these micro fractures. So they're not only literally creating micro fractures, but they're swinging it all to create this one piece. As I said, I can't imagine how many of these didn't survive just to get you to this one. So I, I don't know. I think it's really special. Look at it in the natural light. It is fire. Okay. It's full on. Ooh, there you go. Let's go ahead and do this. Get, look at that. Full on fire effect. Put that in your window. Look at that. It is on fire, literally, without even exposing it to any kind of artificial light. If you are lucky enough to be able to have that on a windowsill, look at that. Is that not gorgeous or what? Hey, Cindy, how are you doing today? Beth B, how are y'all doing? Again, you're seeing it's you're seeing more of the orange in the base, and you're going to get more of that red up through the swing and to the mouth. And again, the tallest point from base is right here to the tip, 24 and 7 8 inches tall. Let me catch up with you guys. Again, manufacturer is Kanawa. Okay, so Pammy's at 145. Thank you, lady. Angela at 150. Ladies, do appreciate it. There's no chips. There's no cracks aside from what was meant to be there. Okay. I will tell you, it is a good, it is a thick piece of glass. I will say that. And I guess they probably had to do like a much thicker glass to be able to sustain the crackle effect and the swing on it. But look at that color. You see it back there? All right. Angela's in it to win it at 150. And ladies, let's do your countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Da -da. I love it. Mine has a tendency to do that too, Alan. I'm not sure why. Angela, I got your just in case of 157. There is our fiery heart bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Do appreciate it. Miss Laurent had it at 151. However, Miss Angela Barker with that just in case of 157. Lady, congratulations at 152. Gosh darn it, you are getting a beaut. It's a beaut. You sure are. 152. Thank you so much. Let me get you written down here, Miss Barker. Miss Angela. Miss Angela. Holla. She's official. Okay. Let me get this around the light here. We're going to set it down carefully. Okay, we're good. You know, the nice thing about that, though, is because it's it's relatively narrow. We're going to pick up the length and the shipping, but the height and width on that, that really does help out with shipping. All right. Let's do our only choice of the sale. How are we doing? Oh, we're only at 2 o'clock. Go ahead. Let's do our only choice. Okay, uh, the sculpt is identical. You'll be choosing between uh, colors. I love these little ones. I had a larger one. Was it last week or the week before? I can't to remember. We're going to start it off at $15. Guess what? I'm bringing two of the minis. I can't believe how lucky I was on this. Bloop. It's the Ball and Claw Bitter Bottles. Yeah, I found two more. The last one I had was much larger. Well, it was probably three times the size. These are the smaller ones. So the choice will be between, obviously, the, the ruby red over here or that gorgeous green that you're seeing. Um, neither has any chips or cracks. Uh, again, both are the Ball and Claw Bitters Bottle. Quite literally, you're seeing the ball. And then you see the turkey claw holding on to the ball. Now, I don't think that these cork stoppers are original. They're, they're, they're feeling a little new to me. Uh, but a gorgeous colorway. 
get your ball and claw bitters for Christmas if you wanted to. But I think both of them are great independent of one another. I love these little accent pieces. Again, here's that gorgeous ruby red. Let me take out the cork. I don't know why I want to take it out, but let's get it into, let's get it into the light over here. Look at that. Beautiful saturation on these. I will say that. I mean, the color in these is just wonderful. Here's our green choice. It is a potion. They are great, of course, for Halloween. Now, the measurement on these, I didn't write the measurement. Ooh. From base to top, we're at three and a half inches. They measure three and a half inches, okay? Again, you'll be able to choose between green or red, neither having any chips or cracks. Again, it is the Ball and Claw Bitters Bottle. And Miss Ellen's in it to win it at 15. Lady, appreciate it. Sally has every color. The medium. Yeah, the medium ones seem to be the hardest. You have the small, the medium, and then the large. Large are difficult, but I have found the large more often than I have found any of the other sizes. So, yeah. Mixed drinks. That's right. All right. Let's go ahead and do the countdown. Again, it'll be choice between red or green. Here we go. 15, 14, 13. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Yes, bitters is like for mixed drinks. Oh, Sally's in it. Oh, oh, you ladies, I, you just keeping me on my toes. There's our rooster, our chicken, our turkey. Bid in. Thank you, Ruthie. Do appreciate it. So Sally and Shereen both were coming in at 16. Ellen played it safe with her just in case of 20. Now, Miss Ellen, you are getting first pick at 17. Would you like red? Would you like green? Or would you like both? That's totally up to you. You let me know. Now, Miss Shereen, you were the first 16 that I see. So we'll go from that. And Sally, that is a great idea to put little seeds in there. That is absolutely darling. Oh, Miss Ellen wants both. All right, lady, you got it. Let me get you written down. Ladies, thank you so much for the bids. And uh, Ellen, congratulations and thank you, lady. You're getting both at 17 each. I'm just getting you written down. All right. Let's set those over to chill. All right. Let's do the only textile uh, that I have for today's sale. Again, very excited. Uh, if you did see the video, I think I posted it last week. I was full of some regrets um, because I found um, a crazy quilt and I didn't get it. And it was an overall really good condition. Um, and I kind of regretted not getting it. However, the Vintage and Antique Gods were very kind to me and they blessed me with another opportunity. However, this opportunity, the quilt is actually in far better condition. I am going to start this uh, quilt off, off at $65, okay? If, of course, anybody is interested. This is a crazy quilt. I'm going to let that pop up so I can highlight it. The measurement on it. It is 85 and a half inches long, 85 and a half inches long, and 68 inches wide. Now, there are two patches that have a little bit of silk or satin melt or shattering, depending on kind of where you're from. I refer to it as melt. Um, some people, as I learned in the comments, refer to it as shattering. All right. There's only two issues with it, but otherwise the quilt is in excellent condition. I'm going to stand up. And we're going to show her off to you. Whoop. All right. Y'all know how I like to do it. We're going to show you the back first. The back is a pink hobnail or popcorn chenille backing. Okay. So you have got a pink popcorn or hobnail chenille backing on it. The border is like this burgundy, like wool. And this is a wool. 
And that runs, of course, all four sides. Here you go. Look at that. So each of your squares, I think this is beautiful. It's all hand done. Let me see if I can't. Okay. Right here is one of your condition issues. See it right here. Let's see if I can't find the other one. All right. Right here. See it? This is like a velvet. It's a very soft velvet. Those are your condition issues. Okay. This is 85 and a half inches long. What did I say? 68 inches wide for your crazy quilt. Okay. It's bright. It's colorful. This one is the hand stitched. Overall, I think it is in really good condition. You know, I don't know. I had another men's tie. I don't think this one is a men's tie. It could, I don't know. I mean, this one certainly does look like this one right here. But then when we get down in here, like this corduroy, that is, I don't know, y'all. Do you think? I had a men's tie one the other day. Oh, I do have another condition issue. Gosh darn it. It's this blue one. It is this blue one. See right there. Dina girl, you made this one? You recognize it? Did you make it out of ties? I don't know. Cause like there's a number of these. Not to say that a men's tie couldn't be made out of that, but I don't know, maybe. That's so weird, especially because I just had a tie quilt the other day. <laughs> Underside fabric tape could fix that one. So, like I say, overall, it is in excellent condition. It's a big one, too. I mean, you most definitely, you know, you could cover yourself up with this, no problem. You probably get two people in that one. So we are at 85 and a half by 68. There are a few condition issues, but overall, I think it is in excellent condition. I, it does look like it's a mix of both ties and fabrics. They just kind of went with whatever it is that they have. I'm not mad at it. Not mad at it. All right, guys. Well, if there is no interest, and again, that is the pink hobnail or popcorn back here on the back. I'm going to fold it up, and we're going to keep her moving. All right. Let's do that down. Yeah, I, I just can't imagine the amount of time that goes into making something like that. All right, we're going to set that over here to the side. Pull the chair back up. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Whew, it's a warm day. It's warm in here. All right, let's do some Fenton. Let's go into Fenton. How about that? Let's do Benton Amber. Now, I had this piece the other week. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before. Last week. Um, and I had this compo, and I was like, I thought for sure it was, it was blue. It was the Viking Dominion pattern. Turns out it is the Fenton Valencia pattern. And had I found this one before I found the blue one, I would have known that. Uh, because this one this week has the Fenton sticker on it. Um, here we go. So we have got the amber glass compote. It is in the Valencia pattern, very similar to the Viking Dominion, pardon me, pattern. However, this one does have the Fenton sticker on it. Okay. Now it does not have a Fenton hallmark on it. So there is no stamp. So we're at 1970 or earlier. 
Again, it is Amber Glass Valencia pattern by Fenton. It obviously is a compote. It is six inches tall, six inches tall, with a diameter of 10 inches, okay? Very hard pattern to get. I know some people say, oh, but it's amber. It is amber, but gosh darn it, this I think is a very homey, a very, it's like a great earth tone. So it does play very well with a lot of different decors. It doesn't have to be just that mid-century, that 60s, 70s vibe to it. It's all about what you accent it with, okay? There are no chips. There are no cracks to the piece. And again, it is the Fenton with the original paper label on that one, okay? I know. I agree. I think that the amber, like I said, it's... It's a really good earthy tone to it. It's a beautiful earth tone. It's going to be very warm and inviting. I think this piece is obviously it's going to be great for kind of like your autumnal, your fall displays. But again, if you and think about it like this, it doesn't have to be mid-century. Throw this in with your uh, like your primitive. I know that that might sound crazy, but I'm telling you, it'll kind of dress it up a little bit. And I agree, Lisa. It's very butterscotch in color. It's not like the brownie amber. It's more of like a warm honey amber to it. Okay. And again, Fenton Valencia, six inches tall, six inches tall. And we are at 10 inches in diameter, 10 inches in diameter. Thank you, Miss Dina is in it at 40. And I'm going to go ahead and start the countdown for you. You could, oh, with your milk glass. You did have a collection of them. Look at that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Sure not. All right, Miss Dina, let's do your countdown, lady. Here we go. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and be done. Six inches tall. 10 inches in diameter. Oh, you like it with the blue? All right, Dusty, let's try it. Okay, I'm not mad at it. I mean, it's an earth tone, you know? Boom, there's our honey pot. Bit end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Do appreciate it. Dina Lady, congratulations and thank you. You are getting a gorgeous piece of Fenton glass here at $40, woman. What, what? Let me get you written down. All right, we got gotcha. you. Mm. All right. Let's do, let's do this piece of glass. I'm just going to see what you guys have to say about this one. Now. You heard me say it before, and I will maintain it. I am not. I'm not the biggest basket fan, like glass baskets. They're just, um, they're just not for me, and that's okay because they are for some people. However, there are some baskets that are just so well done. I can't but help fall in love with them. This is one of those baskets, okay. I'm going to start this one off. And again, this is late. This one is late 1800s, um, very early 1900s, okay? Fairy lamp for the Amberina, agreed. Um, it is a four-footed with a two-handle. I, Lizzie, I have only ever found one amethyst swung bays that was a hot minute ago it was a fenton it was uh hand painted yeah check it that's a basket i can get behind okay so we have the two applied handles okay it's very art nouveau in its appearance it's not like a traditional uh like 70s 80s basket um again this one is uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. So we do have our two clear glass satin handles. These are, of course, applied. They are done in the thorn branch. So you do see the little thorns on them. 
We are four footed. We do have a clear satin four footed again that is applied. And then we have our yellow and white cased basket. Look at that. Talk about something that is elevated for Easter. Oh, and guess what? By the way, the yellow, it glows. That's right. The yellow in this one will give you a beautiful uh, frosted uranium glow to it. Now, with the outdoor lights, with the ring lights, I do have overhead lights on. I'm not even going to bother. But do believe and trust that this yellow does fluoresce to that uranium green. Now, there is a manufacturer flaw on this piece, and it exists in one of the ruffles. It's, um, okay. You see right here? So there was separation in the glass. It's right there. See it? Let's see if I can. It's a pain to. Right oh, there. You see my thumb? Kind of boop, right there. It's not all the way through. Like it doesn't extend up through the ruffle. It's just in the crease of the ruffle. So it is there. Okay. But that is, it's totally manufacturer. All right. The measurement on our basket, it is 10 inches tall. 10 inches tall on that one. This, I agree. I actually had, um, <laughs> I had the milk glass. Look at that look. The milk glass eggs in there. I mean, stop it. You want to create a Victorian Easter, get a couple of, of the eggs, right? Put you in some grass. Then maybe what you do is you have like a flower frog um, and then you can pop in like an antique Easter card. Boom. I mean, super elevated, super simple Victorian Easter look to it. But I love this. Again, the yellow, it's full satin, full satin treatment, okay? You have a four-footed basket in clear satin applied, two applied thorn branch handles, and a beautiful yellow-white cased glass basket. The yellow will fluoresce in the uranium green. All right, let's do it. Where am I at here? I'm going to catch up. Okay, so there I am at 30. Now I know, let's see here. Betsy was the first 30 I'm seeing at 30. Lizzie at 30. Lizzie's at 32. I think that was it. Betsy's at 31. Lizzie is holding it at 32, right? Okay, Miss Ellen's coming in at 35. She saw those eggs in there and she was like, you know what? <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you so much for the bids. I do appreciate it. Again, we do have a manufacturer issue. It is on the underside of the ruffle. You literally, okay, it's somewhere, okay, right here. So again, you have that separation right there for you. You can kind of see that. Let me do the thing, the finger again here. Where am I at? Where? Oh, right here. It's right, right there. See the finger? Right there, there's separation. All right. Cracked egg opening. It very much does look like an egg, though, right? All right, let's go ahead. Angela's getting in it, too. Miss Betsy's at 36. Angela's at 37. Let's go ahead and start the countdown. Again, yellow will for us. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and a bit end. Guess that I'm just saying this basket's special because I'm normally like, Ew, it's a basket. But this one, I was like, ooh, that's a basket. All right, you guys, got your just in cases. There is our sunflower bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. All righty. So Ms. Ellen was the first just in case at 41. Angela, I'm seeing you also with a just in case of 41. However, ladies, Lizzie came in with her just in case of 53. So at 42, a congratulations and a thank you to Lizzie. You were getting this gorgeous basket, might I add. And Lizzie, well, I really feel like, okay, I'm making stuff up. Maybe I'm thinking of last night's purchase, Lizzie. I'm thinking of last night's purchase. Like, did you get something else? Anyhow, thank you, Lizzie. I do appreciate it. Thank you, of course, to everyone. All right. Let's get 
weird er let's get weirder okay okay next piece excited to see what you guys think about this one we're gonna start it at 45 you know we're bougie up in here okay so i've got a really it's kind of jack and pulpity it's not really a jack and pulpit ish but gosh darn it so, Lizzie, I don't have any amethyst swung vase, glass vases, but I do have this amethyst ruffle floral bubbled bulb that I don't know. I mean, y'all, and it is amethyst. Look, it is so thick to get to the purple as a paint. Well, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get it on camera or not. Um. It is an amethyst, okay? So there we go. How about that? It's an interesting piece. It certainly is. It's dynamic. It is unusual. I had to pick it up for you guys. Um, the measurements on this one, any quote-unquote jack and pulpit, if you will. We are at 10 and a half inches tall. 10 and a half inches tall, okay? The diameter on our ruffle is at seven inches, seven inches, okay? We have no chips, no cracks on it. I mean, it's totally like a flower. Like to me, I'm seeing like the bulb of the flower, of course, the stem. And then I am seeing the ruffle is, of course, the flower. I just think it's very unusual. I think going with a brass and a, a dark emerald green, I think this color would pop. I think a lot of people would see this and think maybe it is um, like a Halloween decor piece. It would go, of course, great with orange. Dress it up. Dress it down. It's black. It quite literally, as they say, goes with anything. Jane is seeing body snatchers. Watch out. Uh, maybe a little alien face hugger. I don't know. Totally up to you. Again, we have no chips, no cracks. There's no signature um, to this one. One large white lily coming out of that black vase. Stop it. Dusty, I like your style. I sure do. Okay. So I don't know of skull right in there. Just get like some museum putty and pop it. Ooh, an eyeball. Put an eyeball right in there. An eyeball in there would look amazing. Of some crimson red, 100%. So again, it is, of course, glass. I don't have a manufacturer on the piece, but gosh darn it, it is a gorgeous amethyst, or if you prefer, just call it black. Um, I, I loved it. It was unusual. It's different. I'm glad I got it. Gosh darn it. There is some like ribbing down here along it. Birds of paradise. I think if you put any flower in here with that black, it's just going to pop out at you. It's a fancy collar. That's right. Ten and a half inches tall, okay? Ten and a half inches tall. The diameter on our ruffle, we are at seven inches, okay? Seven inches. No chips, no cracks. And if we have no interest on that, I'm going to set it to the side, you guys, and we're just going to keep it moving, okay? So here we go. All right, let's do another book. Ooh, let me switch over. Um, let's do this one. I don't know which is which. Bear with me. I have, there's two books that I have two of in the same. All right, we're gonna. Okay, Amy is in it at 45. Amy, I'm gonna do your countdown. So let's do it. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one, and bid end. Amy, I'm already writing you down, girl. Bam! There's our crystal ball bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Amy, I think you got a really unique piece. Congratulations and thank you so much. I do appreciate you. All right, we'll set it back down carefully all right we're going to do 
almost antique. This one is from 1928. We're going to start her off at $25. Let's give you a, a little copy right here without my hair. Boom, 25. So 1925. Or, yeah, hello. 1928. This is the seventh edition. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. Textbook of Anatomy and Physiology, 7th edition, okay? 1928, gosh darn, if it's not in really good condition, okay? Now, if you are not into physiology and anatomy, you might want to look away. I'm going to kind of flip through the pages without getting too up close and personal. Um, so, yeah, there are color plates that are in here. Most of it, of course, is going to be in black and white. Originally... It was set up and electrotyped in 1894, but again, we are in 7th edition, published in 1927, okay? Here we go. So I don't know what I'm about to show you. So again, if you're a little squeamish, maybe you're not going to see anything, okay? So there are, of course, illustrations in here. I'm going to try not to get too, like I said, up close and personal with it. I don't want anybody being like, oh. Um, we've got lots of charts and figures. Oh, I knew what that was. I'm sure a lot of you did, too. Um, where, oh, okay, so we're getting into it. Watch out. There's just things that, you know, we all have that are all part of the... Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, again, I think that the... Wow, look at that one. That's. Let's just do it. I think that's really cool. Obviously, it's our arteries and our nets and what's not. But just illustrations throughout, pictures. Or oh, there's a skeleton. I think the skeleton's kind of okay. Oh, there's a skull. There's our skeleton. Spooky, scary. All right. We got Jamie's in it at 27. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I'm telling you, for its age, it's in really good condition. Like I said, you're seeing like a lot of the veins and the arteries where you're getting the blues, the reds, and the black and the whites. Lots of charts, figures, facts. Um, just, you know, I know some people consider it very macabre, but at the end of the day, this is what we're all walking around with at the end of the day. So, you know, hey, to each their own, the medical stuff, especially the antique stuff. There's definitely a market out there for it. I want to bring you guys as strange and unusual stuff as I can. It's all the nuts and the bolts and the screws. That's right. I mean, that's what it is. So again, as you saw, there's no rips, tears. There's very little foxing to the book, uh, which I think is quite remarkable, especially given its age. We are at 1928, nearly 100 years old. Jamie is in it at 27. And let's go ahead and start the countdown. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. Bloop, bloop, bloop. There's the eyeball bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Appreciate it. Jamie, congratulations and thank you. You are getting your textbook of anatomy and physiology by Kimber and Gray, 1928 for $27. Congratulations and thank you. Let me get you written down. Jamie. All right, Jamie, gotcha. And let's just take a little quick pause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just as a reminder, you guys, if you are new to the sale and this is your first purchase or it has been a while since you have purchased from me, please make sure that you do go ahead and send out an email to the cult of vintage at yahoo.com. You're going to want to include your real name if it is different than your YouTube username. Your full shipping address, most importantly, of course, is going to be that zip code so I can get you calculated discounted shipping. 
and the email address that you use for PayPal. If you don't have PayPal, you can most certainly still purchase something. I'm just gonna send you a link, send me the same email with the same information. I'm gonna send you a link that's gonna let you check out as a guest. You don't have to sign up for anything. You can use any credit or debit card that you would like, and you're still going to go ahead and get that buyer protection. That's it. If you don't get an, an invoice from me within eight hour within eight hours of the sale ending, and you can count on it unless I say otherwise, within eight hours of the sale ending, I don't have your contact information. So you got to send me that contact information. That way I can get you your vintage or your antique good out to you. Okay. All right. Let's go on. We've got two. We've got six items left. Six items left, you guys. Six items left. Let's do it. We're going to do some glass right now. Um, and then, let me cross this off. All right. Let's do... I want to do this one. Ooh, this is a beaut. This is a beaut, too. We're going to start her off at 25. If, of course, anything or if anybody, if anything is interested if anybody uh, is interested now we've got some beautiful this is a beautiful look at this I've never not with these poles on it okay this is a gorgeous turquoise blue opalescent this is a calling card dish is what they would have been used for so these would have sat in a, in a 1800s 1900s home they would sit in the entryway and as a guest would arrive in your home, everybody had their own little calling card, and that would be placed in this dish. So this is actually a calling card dish. Um, this one will fluoresce. So the blue does contain some uranium. Uranium was used in the blues back in the day. You're going to see the glow is going to come down here into the base, as well as about a quarter of a way up. It does not fluoresce in the opalescent part. It's pretty diluted at that point okay i love look at that is that not gorgeous or i mean how can you not love opalescent thank you taylor do appreciate uh, your bits but look at that look at, it's just so ethereal i think this is beautiful again talking about spring and easter you could use it for your winter decor oh my gosh heidi a hundred percent it does look like a snowflake. I think it's stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. We have a nine inch diameter on this one, keeping in mind that the measurement I took was from pole to pole. So nine inches approximately. It may vary um, depending, of course, on where you're measuring it from. Each of these poles, uh, it does appear that it was done by hand. So these poles were not put in um, the mold, okay? You guys, thank you so much for the bids. Look at that. That opalescent is just, this is why I love opalescence. Again, it's that very um, magical or ethereal, just a hue and glow to it. Goodness, it's a beautiful misty day. It's a beautiful sky with the clouds in it, right? It's just so tranquil. And again, we've no chips no cracks and that blue glass that does not have the opalescence you will see that it does fluoresce for you all right miss betsy's in it miss tiffany is in it ladies thank you so much for your bids we've no chips no cracks beautiful scroll work pattern to it the pulls are done by hand okay so when i measured it the widest diameter was at nine inches ladies let's go ahead and start your countdown here we go so 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, oh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. I'm sorry, but you can't go wrong with opalescent glass. I love the clear with the opalescent, but the blue I think is a little bit more elevated. I do like the green, but I think it would go blue, white, then green. But Fenton did a great with the cameo, though, too. Just an unusual. So opalescence all around. You can't go wrong with it. There is our snowflake bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Do appreciate you. 
All right, we got the bid. So Tiffany was high at 35. Betsy came in at 36. Joan Lady, your 60 came in right after the snowflakes. I do appreciate you. Um, okay, so Ellen had that just in case of 45. Miss Taylor loving her glass. She had that just in case of 59. So Taylor, congratulations and thank you again, lady. You are getting a gorgeous piece at $46. Really appreciate you. Get your written down here, lady. Got it. Um, all right. This is one of those things where I went out on a limb. <laughs> I mean, not too far out on a limb. I know that, you know, well, we'll see what you guys think. I think it's beautiful. I bought it because of the sculptural detailing on it. Um, it's it's an unusual sculpt. It's not a piece that I've seen in the past. So I did decide to go ahead and pick her up. Um, we're going to start it at 20. There are no chips. There are no cracks to this piece. And again, we're in that uh, Victorian era, uh, more specifically, and the Art Nouveau movement. Yvonne, it came in well after the bid end, girl. You, she's out there lagging. Now, I don't have a hallmark on this one. I had a feeling that this particular piece was sold as a blank. So more than likely, it would have been an Austrian or German company that created the blank. It was then shipped or imported over here to the Americas. It was then purchased by a, a fine lady of the house. And in her pastime, just as we did in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they um, would go to ceramics class. This one's porcelain. And they would hand paint. Oh, Yvonne, are you bidding on this one, girl? She's bidding on this one. I'm hoping. Yvonne, I'm going to hold you at 28. Look at that. So this, the floral detailing is all hand painted on this. There is some gilding, but with a lot of the pieces of the time, the gold paint, the gilding has kind of worn off. Do you see this handle? Do you see that handle? Do you see the detail on that? And it is mirrored on both sides. Look at this. And again, we do have the gold gilding down here. It survived a little bit more because it just didn't get the handle um, done to it. I don't mind a little bit of that loss to the gold. I really think it's beautiful. Again, this is just an exceptionally, I, I love the sculpt on this, okay? It's super organic. The flowers are done so well. Again, these are hand painted. It is not transfer wear. Thank you, Miss Luba. I got you in it at 31. I know they did, look at that. Let's get up close and personal. I love it. I love this handle. And I love the sculptural detailing coming down onto the actual vase. I mean, it quite literally is just like a little water pitcher. Would I use it for a water pitcher? No. Do I think it's just an absolutely gorgeous decor piece? Oh, well, 100%. Could you kind of set this out at a garden party? You could. Could you use it as a floral vase? 100%. Keeping in mind, I would just be very cognizant of letting water sit in there. It is fully glazed. Yeah, it is fully glazed on the interior, okay? I love the old timey though, right, Angela? It's beautiful. It's, it's very feminine. It's very traditional. Um, but I think there's something to be said for it. All right, we got Miss Ellen is in it at 32. We have no chips, no cracks on it. The height, and that would be from the base to the top of what is essentially the thumb, Handle, I'm not going to hold it by the, by the handle. We are at nine inches from tip to base, nine inches, okay? Oh, my gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? Is that not gorgeous or what? All right, guys, let's go ahead. I had to clean it up. She was, she was pretty dingy. I will say it turned into a completely, like, I bought it, and I thought it was beautiful. But then when I cleaned it up, I was like, oh, she's a real beauty. She is a real beauty. She just, it was hard to see, but there was like dirt down in these and along the handles and just some discolor. But oh, uh, anyhow, let's do it. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Look at that. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. 
Sandy coming in hard at 48. Do appreciate you. Luba threw it down with her just in case at 77. Ooh, there is our floral bid and Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. I do appreciate it. Sandy, you had that bit of 48. She threw it down. Respect. However, Miss Luba came in hardcore with that just in case of 77. Miss Luba, lady, congratulations. You're getting one of my favorite pieces of the sale. Look at it's this handle, though. Did you look at all those pass through? Like, it ain't cheap. Look, there's even a pot. Look at this. Luba girl, you got a beautiful piece. You're getting it, lady, at I don't know how many dollars. 49. Congratulations, Miss Luba at 49. Let me throw you up there. Okay. Down to our last four. Let's go ahead and do this one. Um, we're going to do another book. And we're also going to start this one at 25. Um, we do have another antique book. This one is copyrighted 1871. You're not seeing double. This one is the philosophy of natural history. Okay, so here is your spine. Again, this one is the philosophy of natural history. You know, your front, or oh wait, that's the back, pardon. Here is your front. Really good antique condition. Again, this one is copyrighted 1871. I thought that this one gave me a number of illustrations. Maybe it doesn't. It is illustrated. It's not giving me the number of illustrations in here. Um, like our first, this one does, they're all black and white. Let me go ahead. Let's see her. So again, this one is all about the animals, okay? I will say there's not 450. And the one thing about this is that I've noticed that this one much more concentrates. There is some foxing. Uh, this one much more con uh, focuses on insects and invertebrates. Okay, so if you love the creepy crawlies, this one is definitely for you. We do have some fish in there. I so said a lot of the insects, we've got some reptiles, some penguins, some turtles, a stork. You know, birds are related to the lizards. Ooh, we got the eagle down there. That's a pretty one. This is just 10 years after the Civil War. That's right. Um, again, really good condition. Aside from the foxing, I mean, I can't be mad at it. It does look like here, like there was a pressed flower in that one at one time. Okay. So again, we are 1871. This is the philosophy of natural hi history. There are illustrations, but as you're seeing, there's not as many illustrations as our previous one. But gosh darn it, I still think... It's worth it. Look at that. There's our pur our purpose. <laughs> it's our special purpose. Uh, porpoise, giraffe. We got a kangaroo. And there, very Charles uh, Darwin, 100%. So I love these books. I think they're great. We've got our little monkey there hanging from the tree. Oh, we even have the human body. General structure of animals. We are, after all, one. All right. Well, okay. Glowy's in at 27. And let's go ahead, what was that? And do the countdown. I don't know. I'm probably not going to be able to find it now, huh? Well, nope. Glowy's in it at 27. Thank you, lady. It is illustrated, but as I said, like the other one, every, nearly every page. I don't even want to know what that was. Not every page has an illustration, but a good number. Again, from what I could see, a lot of it is going to be insects, mammal, or um, invertebrates, including lizards and birds. So let's do it. 15, 14, 13. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, ooh, an eel, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid and. What are you? It's a platypus. It's a platypus. Isn't it interesting how when you flip through a book, they go to like the same pages? 
it's so random. All right, bid about to end. Book bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Glowy lady, you had that bid at 27. Dusty's really going after the natural history books. Dusty, congratulations and thank you again. You're getting you your other natural history here at 28. That's a great deal. Congratulations. It's coming to you. She's getting her whole, her whole library. Um, let's go ahead and do our other book. Why not? We've got three items left. I'm going to start this book off at $20. If, of course, anybody is interested, this one is from 1928. This one is Anatomy and Physiology for Nurses. This is the new and revised edition, okay? Right? Do you see a theme to the books here today? Just trying to bring you guys some really uh, unique or weird kind of subject matter. And of course, I love a good illustration. So you know there's gonna be some illustrations. This is the back, plain. This is the front, plain. All right, what do we do? Oh, this is the one. Okay, so you see the spine, it's it's still there, but you do see it separated. Like the actual, like, I don't know what one would call this. What is this material? There's separation there. It's still present, so do be mindful of that. But of course, it is fully illustrated. And just like the other one, this one does have the, um, oh, like how they did the blue and the red. This one actually has more illustrations than the other one. So this anatomy and physiology, and I think it's because it's for nurses. Um, so it does have a lot more illustrations throughout the book there. Like, I mean, you, you're going to, I'm, I don't think this is so horrible, but you know, some people might not like it, but you know, the illustrations in this one are much larger. Um, this one does have like the semi-glossy pages though too. So it's really helped. You're gonna see minimal to no foxing. Of course, we have our glossary there, but tons of illustrations, charts, reference materials. Again, it is, I don't know. It is copyrighted from, what was it? 1928. So Ms. Yvonne is in it at 20. Thank you so much for the bid. Um, overall, really good condition, tons of interesting subject matter, but again, we're all walking around with it, which is both equally fascinating and disturbing all at the same time. I don't know. So lots more illustrations, I will say, in our lot than our last one. Illustrations are a bit larger in this one, and again, you've got that semi-gloss to it, so you're seeing very little foxing, okay? There's those red and blues it's really interesting oh you are a nurse yourself uh, i was like "Woo, we got real close and personal on that one it didn't show anything so all righty guys we got glowy and of uh, ivan is in it you ladies thank you so much and we're gonna go ahead and start your countdown glowy is in it to win it at 22 thank you here we go 15 14 13 12 11 10 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and Budant. Oh, I thought, oh, oh, I agree. Lizzie got one heck of an anatomy and physiology. Sister friend got a major score. You got a real good one there. This is a good one too, though. All right, there's our people bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Do appreciate you. Yvonne had uh, 23. Yvonne had a bid of 25. However, Miss Glowy is also building her library today with that just in case of 52. Glowy, congratulations and thank you, lady. You are getting your anatomy and physiology of our nurses at 26. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh-oh. Glowy's got a stitch book with that clothing, and now she got this anatomy and physiology. I'm keeping an eye on her. What's going on over there, lady? Okay. 
Now, before we get to our last final two items, I think we will have uh, the time to do our bonus item. I do want to uh, call your attention to a one thing. And you guys know I like to be super upfront and super clear on things. You will note that in today's sale, as you came in, uh, as you normally see, I do have subscriber mode on during the sales. What subscriber mode means is, is that anybody can watch the sale. If they're subscribed, if they're not subscribed, it doesn't matter. You can still watch the sale, uh, both live and, of course, in a replay. What subscriber mode means is, is that if you are watching it live and you would like to engage in the chat, I have enabled only those that are subscribed to the channel to be able to engage in the chat. Typically, I set it for five minutes, meaning you would have had to have been subscribed to my channel for just five minutes to be able to actively bid or to participate in the chat. Today, I decided to actually enable uh, it to be for 20 minutes. Why? Um, I will say, I don't know if it is um, the best, you know, business sense to kind of maybe have people not be able to bid because they haven't been subscribed to my channel for more than 20 minutes. Um, however, I really look at it in the long term and, you know, and I do appreciate, you know, the recognition of, you know, the working hard to go out and to get good um, things. And, and, and yeah, if you have it set for five minutes, 10, 15, 20, it does stop the sex bots from being able to come in and be disruptive to, to the chat or to have um, people at large come into the chat and just kind of create conflict and, and chaos. Um, but it also does serve the purpose is, is that, you know, I do work really hard. And as I have said a number of, of different times that no matter how you support the channel, there is no one way that is too small. Um, and I really want, you know, those of you that have continuously demonstrated support to be the folks that really do have the opportunity to, to be able to purchase um, the item. So I did knock it up to 20 minutes. I don't think that's really asking too much. Um, you know, I, I do work hard to bring you guys good stuff. And a lot of you have just over the year have really continued to support me. So I don't know. I just I just want everybody to to be able to get into oh the book yeah yeah um, I just want everybody to really feel like that support is not for naught you know and I don't really think saying that you should you should be subscribed to my channel for twenty minutes to participate in a sale is that big of an ask at the end of the day and um, that's just a decision that I decided to make and um, I'm just going to be upfront with you guys on that. With your books, with your books, yes. As Lizzie discovered, I do. Um, if you have ephemera paper, anything like that, I will seal your item um, in plastic. I speak from experience um, that there have been a number of times when my packages um, have been left in the rain to soak. Um, so I really do. Um, not to say that it's foolproof, but when you have things that should not be exposed to water, I do try to wrap them in plastic. And that includes textiles, too. I, I don't want anybody opening up soggy, gross textile bag um, and it just be saturated in soap. Like, that's just not a fun experience. So we do try not to say that's perfect. Water could still get in, um, but I at least try to make sure that if it does happen, water does not get in. Thank you guys for the support. Really do, really do appreciate it. Let's get into our last two items and the bonus item. All right, here we go. So we're all done on that page. We're going to keep it to the front. Guess what? I have got, oh, maybe I didn't. Did I not put this on the list? Y'all stop. I don't think I did. I didn't. I'm going to have to add it on here right quick, y'all. I do apologize. Didn't even put it on the list. All right. Wow. My goodness. Not very professional of me. We're going to start it at $15. If anybody is interested, since I didn't even put it on the list, let me go ahead and get a measurement. 
we are at five and one eighth inches, five and one eighth inches at its tallest. Interesting uh, little measurement on it. This is a Jefferson glass. It is a stemmed rose bowl. Okay, five and one eighth inches. Uh, beautiful blue, oh, shocking. Beautiful blue opalescent glass. No chips, no cracks. This is not the reproduction. And the easiest way to tell when things are the reproduction is you see the pass through in the knot down here. More often than not, that actually will be filled with glass. So it will be a thin piece of glass, but whether it's one, two, three, or all four sides, uh, you will not be able to see through this with entirety. So that is an easy tell when it is a reproduction, okay? Uh, there are no chips, there are no cracks, and yes, this one will in fact fluoresce. Again, with the natural light, the ring lights, the overhead, it ain't going to happen. Um, so I'm not going to get it to glow to you for you, but yeah, if you do put it in your UV display, it will give a green fluoresce. It's not going to be like bright green neon, um, you know, typical, but it will, or it does contain the uranium uh, for a little bit of color, but also for clarity. This is what they would use it for. Uh, Jefferson Glass, thank you guys for the bids. Do appreciate it. Pammy Whammy, do, 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 do. Betsy's in it to win it at 23. Uh, Dina, so, okay, Dina's coming back at it at 25. Uh, thank you guys so much. Heavy opalescent up there around the rim. I love the beaded effect to it. It almost looks like there is water in there. That's just, of course, the light playing with it. Let's expose it over here to full natural light. Beautiful. Love it, love it. All right, ladies, let's go ahead and start your countdown. Again, no chips, no cracks. And at our tallest, which of course is to the ruffle, five and one eighth, weird, five and one eighth inches. All right, let's do the countdown for you. Here we go. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, ooh, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. You know what, Gypsy? If you had a purple one in this, even if it is, that would be pretty. I'm not mad at it. All right, Miss Betsy's hold. Oh, nope. Miss Joan, Miss Joan. Oh, there is our water bid end. Thank you, Ruthie B. Do appreciate it. Now, Miss Joan had the first 40. Dina, I see you also at 40. However, Miss Misty Meadows, otherwise known as Ellen, came in with that just in case of 46. A pew, pew to you, lady, at 41. Gorgeous. Stemmed uh, Ruffle Bowl by Jefferson is going coming to you, Miss Ellen, at 41. Thank you so very much. Appreciate you. Let me lean over here to get the bonus item. Okay. We have one more item to our sale. It's, is it the, it's not the smallest, but it's one of the smallest. We're going to start this one off at just $10, of course, if anybody is interested. And that's all that matters, Gypsy, all that matters. Um, now, this one, it is a pottery flower frog. There is a little ding to the underside right here that you were seeing. I don't have a manufacturer on it. Um, it's definitely like a early to mid 1900s. It just has the quality or the weight uh, so far as the material as well as the feel to the glaze. Sally's in it to win it at 10. A gorgeous little brown kind of marbled uh, flower frog here for you. I love these. You're kind of wondering, well, what am I going to do with these? I love these stacked, especially in the different colors. But something to think about using these for in a non-traditional way is if you do have um, a stick pin or a hat pin collection, you can get multiple pins in here and you've got a beautiful display, right? It's a way in which to be able to display those pins without actually having to pin it into something. Consider your flower frogs, whether they are the pottery ones or whether they are the metal ones, both will work of course for that purpose. So overall, really good condition. I don't have a manufacturer on this one. We do have a small chimpy chimp right there. You see it? And it's more to the glaze than to the ceramic. Well, hello, Linda. How are you doing? He's out working today. He's working. 
It is at two and a half inches in diameter, and we're at approximately one and a quarter. One and a quarter in height. Oh, it looks like a cupcake, doesn't it? Or a little brownie from that side. It's a little brownie. All right, Miss Sally B is in it at 10. Lady, congrats, or thank you so much. Congratulations, I'm just giving it to you. Let's do the countdown for you. Here we go. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid and a cinnamon bun. Or would, oh, Sandra's coming in at 11. Sal got her just in case of 16. Thank you, Shireen. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me today. There is our cookie bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Sandra, you had the high bid at 11. However, Miss Sally came in with her just in case of 16. So at 12, Miss Sally B, lady, you are getting your pottery frog. Congratulations and thank you. All right. The last item. No. The last item I'm going to do a little something something with. Now, this is one of those, one of these things is not like the other. Well, here it is. This thing doesn't really go with the flow of any of the sale today. Um, but I'm going to see if anybody's interested. I am. I took a little bit of a risk. I did spend up for it a little bit. Um, let me write it down. I didn't even write it on the thing here. Okay. We're going to kind of do a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this item initially as a claim. I'm going to assign the dollar amount. If anybody is interested in it, is all you'll have to do is put in the assigned number. So again, example, this is my hand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's $10. If anybody is interested, put in the number 20. The first person that I see that puts in the number 20 will be the winner. I'm going to do a little bit of a difference to this, okay? Because I did spend up on this item and I don't know if it's really, if people are gonna be interested in it. If there's only one person who puts in the number, it will be a straight claim. If I see multiple people put in the corresponding number, we're gonna say, okay guys, we're gonna do a 10 second countdown so people can get in on it. Does that make sense? And then we'll turn it into like a condensed little um, offer up. We're gonna do it as a quick claim. If only one person's interested, you win it. If there's multiple people, we'll say, okay, I'm going to do a countdown. If you want to go higher, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. All right. Does that make sense? Ruthie says, yes, we're getting it. Okay. This is going to speak to nostalgia for some of you. This item is actually a vintage toy. It is from Mattel. It is from 1962. Okay. Let me go ahead and show you. Now, it includes everything. It is complete, including the original packaging. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's Cecil. Cecil. Beanie and Cecil. It's Cecil the Sea Dragon, right? So it is Cecil and his disguise kit by Mattel. I don't know if we're going to be able to get it. But it is copyrighted 1962. I know for many of you, this is going to speak to childhood memories, okay? So we have got the box. Now, the box does have some splits right here, right here, and right here, okay? This is not the original cellophane. As a matter of fact, what this is, is a Ziploc baggie. Now, that's from the vendor. I didn't do that. I can kind of appreciate it because doing that has really helped keep Cecil clean. So I greatly appreciate that. Uh, this is not color forms. Oh, no. This is Cecil and his disguise kit by Mattel from 1962. It's complete. Okay. Here we go. So there is cellophane wrapped on here, and I'm going to try it because this will really help me show it. You get the plush Cecil. Oh, yeah, you do. So you get plush Cecil 
And you see over here and all of the little compartments, all of the little accoutrement, you get all of his disguises from wigs to hats to horns to grass lays to floral or not grass, but hula skirts, glass flower lays you can see it right in there i love the little hat you see some of the wigs cowboy hats you've got horns you've got teeth you've got a sheriff badge in there you create all the looks y'all create all of the looks so it is the plush cecil and disguise kit from mattel copyrighted 1962 Okay, I'm going to leave this cellophane on. It's going to still come wrapped in plastic, of course, whether you play with it, whether you dis, uh, display it. But Cecil is in great condition and his tail does come down underneath. Okay, now Angela, girl, he's going to be a claim. Beth B was seven. Now he is complete, okay, with the original box. I'm going to do it as a claim. If anybody is interested, I'm going to, add, he is going to be 125. One to, I know it's high. I get it. I get it. He will be 125 complete. If anybody is interested is all you have to do is put in number 17. Number 17, you will get Cecil complete at 125. You're 40 year Okay, Glowy's in it. That's one heck of a And I think I'm only seeing Glowy. Five, four, three, two, one. It's sold to Glowy at 125. Glowy, congratulations and thank you, lady. I'm just I wasn't going to sell it. I'm not going to lie. I wasn't going to sell it, Glowy. I really, truly wasn't. I know he's going to go to a good home. So there is that balm to kind of help with, with the, the deep cut to my soul. But Glowy, congratulations, lady. I really do appreciate that. I know he's going to be loved and he'll be protected. I'm still a little sad. I am a little sad. I'm not going <laughs> to Thank you, Glowy. Congratulations, lady. All righty, guys. That is it for today's sale. I do appreciate it. You guys, no, I go, Glowy, no. Um, no, ma'am. Um, no, I'm glad he's going to go to uh, listen. But we're good. <laughs> um, you guys, thank you so much for coming to today's sale. Um, again, no matter how you are able to support the channel, whether you're a subscriber, you comment, you thumbs up, you leave a comment, you're here to engage in the chat, I greatly appreciate it. It all adds up in my ability to be able to get up here and to do this. I am a small business. This is quite literally my job. So yes, I definitely appreciate the purchases. Um, it really truly lets me keep going out there and doing this. Um, you guys, thank you so much again for every single way in which you support. Um, I'm not 60. He is 60. He looks real good. Maybe he had some work done. I don't know. Um, but it really does. I really do appreciate it, you guys. It, it's been an, an amazing adventure, and it is all thanks to you guys. And, and again, every single way in which you are able to support me. Ruth the B, lady, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. You're always killing it with those bid ends, ladies. Really appreciate it. Uh, you guys, don't forget to send me your email. If I don't have your contact information, invoicing will be going out this evening. Keep in mind that it might be about midnight that the item or that you get your invoice. We're going to go out to dinner um, here in a little bit, but I will get some stuff done quickly. Uh, so do look for those invoices. Thank you, Connie. I'll look for that email Ooh, with a T. Um, I'm excited. So you guys, thank you so much. I hope that you all have a great rest of the day, a beautiful evening, a great night. Don't forget that I will be back with Misty next Tuesday, back on Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Again, that is on Misty's channel. It will be our weekly 
Tuesday sale. And of course, next Wednesday, I will be back here on the Cult of Vintage at 1 p.m. Eastern. You guys, thank you. I will. We will have a great dinner. You guys, thank you so much. Be safe. Have fun. Remember, if you get in trouble or if you find trouble, just don't get caught. Okay. You guys have a great night. Thanks, guys. Bye now.